750 yards, 759 yards. There's another bowl there too. Yeah. Just down below, to the left, down yep, below and to the it. left. That's a good bowl. Got it, you see him, mate? Yep. We should take him. Shots, two bulls, two hours. That's how to start, baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, this, this is why you come chase a tar. Yeah. Because for this mount right yeah, here, that's right. what this thing will look like up on the wall. Yeah. Beautiful. So bigger horns, but the trophy. Is well, the it, it, that's. I right. think Mike's that's got right. it. Yeah. So I, I'd say he's still, it's still up on me. <laughs> um, we definitely had some good challenges, particularly on the recovery of the tar, just getting back to camp, we did a, a pretty major mountain climb and we ended up in the dark. It took us three hours to get back to camp. breakfast is some cereal and yogurt and then we've got some grilled cheese sandwiches too with bacon. Got the legs burning on a one trip for water, no go. So we're doing the old melt the snow to make breakfast. We're getting ready to have some granola and yogurt. 20 bucks is the yogurt's homemade so probably pretty good. All we gotta do is add some hot water we're gonna have some awesome breakfast. Time to talk. I won't have time to talk in just a minute, but it looks good. Some packs on. We're gonna chase some chamois. Um, we saw a couple here yesterday when we were put down at the camp. So the plan is just to make a little big circle on the top of this ridge. Uh, had a pretty easy morning. Got all our stuff put together. One of the things about hunting is, especially with the camera, you don't get to capture the real essence of what's going on. We had a really awesome start two awesome shots and then we spent the rest of the day recovering. We didn't get out of there until about sunset and then we hiked for three and a half hours to get here back to camp. So it was in the dark, we come up over that peak, uh, got rim rocked on some rocks, we got in some ice fields, everybody was exhausted. It was an, a long trip and we, we busted our butts. The work in this case came on the recovery and the return to camp, not necessarily finding the tar in the first place, but we've got two down. Now if we can take out some chamois, we'll be back at the lodge sleeping on a soft bed here pretty quick. Okay, we're going to glass down this whole area in front of us to the south and then that big long sunny ridge down to the west as well because the chamois will be just coming out to the sun to warm up. Yeah, they should be feeding out on the tussock for most of the day. Uh, it's during the rut so the bucks will be running. They'll be working females and going from one group to the next, looking for females that are in heat. So we've got to go real quietly. They're very alert, very agile, super, super spooky. So, yep, game on. I could have went this way, then I would have found him. Zion goes this way, he finds him. It's not looking so good. Well, Zion's got one just over the hill here. He's gonna take a look, kinda make sure that's just the one before the rest of us poke our heads up over to see him. That makes Zion three, Davidson boy zero for spotting. That's getting embarrassing.
we saw some chamois earlier. Um, they disappeared down in this gully, so we're trying to sneak around and get a vantage point on them. But looks like a good spot. The weather's nice. We got all day, so hopefully we can get in on these two bucks, but we'll see. Don't do it like I did. Hi, my name is Craig Thomason, and I'm a gunner here with Long Range Pursuit. You know, in all of my travels around, I get to shoot with a lot of people with a lot of different experience levels. You know, I shoot with the best of the best and brand new beginning hunters. You know, a lot of people at the range can shoot really well. They, uh, they shoot good off a bench, but when they get in the field and the excitement and the emotion of the, of the experience gets a hold of them, some people, even though you have the best equipment available, you're gonna miss. It's not uncommon, it's not unusual to be feeling emotions that you don't normally experience on the bench when you're shooting for fun. So, a couple of things that I like to do uh, breathing is a technique that we, sh we teach in our shooting schools that, that it just calms you down. Now, of course, if you've just hiked up a hill or the buck of your lifetime is standing in front of you, it's hard to really slow your breathing down. So what helps me is a practice known as dry firing. Some of you are familiar with this, some of you may already be incorporating in this your, into your routine, but what it does is you take your rifle, you get into your shooting position. Now, you know, for, for a lot of us, that's going to be an uncomfortable position that you're not practiced up on. But if you can get into that situation, of course, before you put a, a round in into the chamber, and then focus on your target. Pick that spot on the animal that you want to hit and break that trigger with a slow, easy squeeze. If your crosshairs don't jump and move off that point of aim, then you can feel confident knowing that your trigger squeeze, your body positioning, your breathing, everything is in line to make a perfect shot. Get behind, adjust your elevation, dial your parallax, get calm, breathing. Now whether you're a beginner or an experienced shooter, if you've got the time to get comfortable, get in your shooting position, get set up, and to where your body positioning and your trigger squeeze isn't affected to where your point of aim stays true, that's going to make you successful in the field. What's the distance on that boy? He doesn't have any horns. That's a pity. Nice looking park. Well, we were excited there for a minute. We had one buck bedded down out here in the shadows all by himself, wide open face, the perfect shooting situation. And he doesn't have any horns. I guess apparently they get the horn rot and their horns rot off and break off. And yeah, he's really killable under 600 yards. Boy, those are small targets. Well, it looks to me like they're bedded down. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon and we've got a couple, two, two and a half hours of light left. I think they're gonna start moving here in the next 45 minutes, I'm guessing. But uh, we're going to check the back side of this hill, watch some of these shady faces, and see if we can find any more better down, and then work our way back up to camp. Hopefully make it to camp before midnight tonight. We'll see. Well, I guess if you see bugs swimming around in the water, it must be able to sustain life. So it must be good. How brown is it? <laughs> There's one big old gnarly spider floating around in there that had a whole bunch of moss on it. Get that from the scrape him away so he didn't get sucked into my plant. Maybe I'll get a parasite. Probably lose about 15 pounds. We were just down here for last night spotted a buck. Got both horns. He's maybe pushing that three to four hundred yard range. We're gonna see if we can get down a little bit further, see if we can see him. We can't see him from here.
I got 360, bro. Dial 3.1 minutes. It's facing straight away. He's gonna turn right. There he goes. Down and out. Watch him. Alright. He is down. Watch me. Oh, oh, that's that's shot. Shot. <laughs> oh, so we've had a heck of a long day looking, finding, and it finally came together. So just, just shows you never give up, that's, right? That's just hunting for you. Keep right? moving, spot. Just moving keep spot. Yeah. Hey. The good thing is he didn't roll down the hill very far. Yeah. Mike, Mike spotted a chamois before the guy did. First we're making of the day. we're making progress. That's true. <laughs> I'll be the first to admit it. Good yeah. spot. I was looking over there about two miles away. Mike's all looking close. Yeah, I was huh? looking down. Here. I didn't want to go over there. I wasn't <laughs> looking over there. <laughs> one down, one to go. One to go. Let's get over there and get our hands on him. A lot of uphill in this country. It seems like you can lose the elevation quicker than you can gain it, obviously, but up on top of that knob's our camp right behind me, and uh, that sham is between us and there, so it couldn't have worked out better. I mean, he's almost just right on the trail back to camp, so pretty excited about that. It'll beat yesterday's haul on those tar. A lot of work. Either uh, here or there. there. I think he's right here. Monster! I mean, they're only 10, 12 inches tall. Holy smokes. Oh, small target? Yeah. yeah. When you're used to shooting, someone's give you bases. 12 inch targets at seven or 800. It makes those 360 yard shots pretty easy. I mean, yeah. Pretty nice. But hey, at least it's, at least it's a reliable, reliable system. You know, he's not getting away. Yeah. Nice buck. He's Sweet. got nice hair. Check that out. Yeah. Good hair. Nice heavy bases, good hooks. See how far around they hook? That's really good. So they all end up kind of about the same height? Oh, no, as they get older, they get taller. A little so, taller? I mean, if you see one with, with, the, with the hooks well above the ears, see when they're looking, they're kind of like that. Once you see them up real so high. So that would be about the same height as the ear? Yep, yep. I mean, obviously, any big them, that's just amazing. But, yeah, you know. very cool. I think the chamois has been kind of a challenge, kind of spread out. You know, they blend in really good, even though they're a darker color. They do blend in with the shadows and rocks. And um, Zion spotted them all today, except for this one. And he would have seen it sooner or later if I wouldn't have caught it quicker. No, I got to shoot the one I spotted. So hunting New Zealand's pretty fun. The mountains are pretty cool. I wish I wasn't such a desk jockey. It's been a long time since I've been up in the hills doing any kind of hiking at all. Probably the steepest mountains I've ever been in. That descent yesterday on those bull tar was probably a little over 60 degree angle. It, it takes a toll on you. You need a good set of sticks and a good set of boots. This grass that we're looking at is just really slick to, to step on. Well, we're out of here. We got uh, 45 minutes to get back to camp before dark. I, I told Mike I think we could make it in 15 if we didn't break five times on the way up. He said it's going to take him 35 minutes, so I guess he's planning on taking the breaks. Well, we've got one chamois done, and then we've got one more to do. First of all, we'll, we'll, we'll glass from here, but then we'll cut up and we'll hunt down off those faces, right around the front and then around the corner. So that'll all be in shade. So kind of like that yeah, one that yeah, yeah. up yeah, yesterday. Yeah, but we saw that one there. Right, and there. then 
about 10, yeah. 11 o'clock, you went over and bed in the shade. Yeah. So by the time we get here, they should be on the bedded side. Yeah. Cooling off. Yeah. All right. And before then, by the, before we get there, they should be moving in the sun, warming up. So should be That's good. That's gonna be nice. I had to shed a layer. I knew I'd only take a couple hundred yards. But this is a pretty spot. I got the sun coming up on this side with Cook Mountain in the background. I got the ocean out there. And I got the valley where all the chamois are down here. So we're fixing for a pretty good day. But our catch up was iron. So we're just gonna follow this ridge down here. Get onto that main ridge going that way. And then just hunt, hunt the top of there. Just glassing off the sides and then off the back into that main river. And then just work your way back around past the lakes. So I think, um, yeah, we'll just get down there and find a good spot. We can see a lot of country, and then we'll glass for probably an hour or so. Okay. Coat's on, coat's off. Seems like as soon as you stop, you want it on. As soon as you start hiking, you want it off. Hiking, hiking, hiking. Been having a dry camp for a couple days. It's been pretty minimal on water. You come over the hill and there's a big old lake down in the bottom. Kind of makes you thirsty. Well, we're not going to get out of a hike today, but options are looking good. We've got two chamois bucks that are shooters. If we can just move in, close the distance, and get on them, they are spooky and they're moving a lot. So. We're not sure, but we're gonna give it a run. So we've got, uh, we've got our buck over here, and uh, what's the word? Shooter? I can't see him. He's down behind that little ridge, but that's good. He'll give us a chance to get out here. That face over there where I saw one earlier, we just seen one moving in the shadows. So we're about 950 yards from there, small target. We've got a little time, he's moving in the right direction. We're gonna to try to close the distance. If we sweep up around to that point of rocks over there, we should be in that 600 to 500 yard range. We'll have a full cover of that whole face. Should be the shot we're looking for. Lots of time to set up. We just need to get there before that buck's gone. Let's hope it's not that one horn buck from yesterday. Go up above, there's the two, the two knobs with Got it. the sun on them. Got it. Go to the left hand knob and the left hand side of it, there's a sliver of bush on that left side. He's just behind that, he's walking up. He's walking up the back of that bush there. There we go. Yeah, it's a good shooter. Good buck. Give me a ring. Strong five there. Good strong five mile an hour. Okay, 493, cross for seven. 6.1 minutes. Sweet tight turn for outside. I'm ready. Okay, he's moving. He's moving. Yeah, he did move again. He's moving off to the right. Got him. Okay, just another range coming. Okay, 511 and 6.5 minutes. Okay. Ready. Hold for a strong five. You got him. You got him. Get it. Give him just another half minute. There he is. Yep, there he goes. It's broadside there. Yep. Good hit. He's done. All right, Aaron. Okay. He ain't gonna recover from two pills of lead, though. <laughs> Good shot, bro. You know, I held for I held for five, but I crowded right behind his shoulder instead of forward. Yeah. Just because I hate to say it, but I was gonna make sure we got lead in him. Yeah. <laughs> so there's two schools of thought about how to hold wind. One of them is, you know, cheat it so that if you miss, you miss off the front. In, in this case, I kind of I kind of crowded a little bit so my crosshairs weren't off the animal. Yeah. Because we were getting a five mile an hour wind here, pretty solid, but we didn't. Know what we were doing. Well, I know for darn sure we got a dead chamois about 20 yards up ahead. 
questions whether or not he's bigger than Mike's. Zion's thinking doesn't have the hooks. I'm revising that. <laughs> yeah? It's a bit hard to tell at 510 yards. Pretty much the same. Pretty similar, yeah. I reckon he's a little taller, half an inch. Yeah, it's right there, ain't it? I reckon he's, he's probably got half an inch, but no A little, bit, little bit heavier, too. Up hey, I have such a hard time trophy judging antelope back home. Imagine being in charge of deciding what to put in a crocket and what's not right here. Hey, what I like about this one is darker. He is darker. Is he's cape? definitely got a nicer cape, yeah. So he's coming off life size, I think. Very cool. So. Very nice. Well done. Thanks, buddy. Good job, Brian. Good job, Skip. Very cool. Nice bike. Well, I'm thinking we've got epic trophy pictures coming up here somehow. We do, yeah. Somehow we got it. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of knobs up here we might be able to get it on. But no, that's stunning. Beautiful bike. He hooks nice, don't he? Real nice. Exactly what we're looking for. 511 yards.